Antarctic Treaty By this point, we've pretty much established the fact that you can't necessarily just venture into Antarctica to visit the massive slab of ice and snow. I mean, with the cold and the threat of frostbite, the continent is definitely not necessarily where you just want to venture into willy-nilly. Here's the thing, though. Even if you did want to visit Antarctica, there's a limit to how much you would be able to do that. This is because of something called the Antarctic Treaty System. As I said earlier, the entire point of that military exercise was to consider if the United States could establish a military base in Antarctica and eventually expand its dominance to cover the entire continent. However, the objective pretty much failed. In 1959, a treaty was signed between 12 countries – Argentina, Australia, Belgium, Chile, France, Japan, New Zealand, Norway, South Africa, the United Kingdom, the United States, and the USSR. The Antarctic Treaty essentially states that the continent doesn't belong to any single country. Just as well, all countries agree to pretty much respect the rights of each other on the continent and only use it for research and a little bit of tourism. The entire point of the treaty is to ensure that the environment is protected and that no man-made activity, including and especially industrialization and war, can threaten the biodiversity of the continent. So, the Antarctic Treaty only ensures that all human activity in Antarctica is properly planned and managed. From tourism and exploration to scientific research, everything needs to be done in accordance with the treaty's rules and regulations.